Bitcoin. This is, uh, like you said, going to be a very difficult co-op game. And then what do you think about this Winter Wyvern in the offlane? Very bold pick. I think this is a very situational offlaner just because his base damage is super low. He doesn't outlane a lot. And he's against arguably one of the strongest dueling carries in the meta in that Luna. Plus a disruptor, no chump himself. But first blood always helps. No, maybe that'll be another sacrifice that uh, will help unlock this Arkosh draft. Yeah, definitely does a lot. This first blood gold swings lanes super heavily in the, in the current patch, so... Pale Horse, definitely happy with that one. And they've been having a little bit of fun here already tipping Sammy over here. I think in general, though, you're going to want to pull waves with this Pango. I don't think you ever play this lane straight up for the early game. Uh, it's just way too hard. You're going to get destroyed in the right-click wars, so expect that from the bottom lane. And I think top lane, this Legion can have a pretty good time, too. Um, as long as she doesn't lose too much region on the first wave or something, she can man fight the Wraith King pretty well. And we've seen Snapfire just pop off in a lot of these games during the first season. This is like the most pick four position by a huge margin. And there's a reason for that. This hero's laning is quite formidable. Well, like they said, it, it looks like a very solid and very scary draft coming out from the side of wild cards. So just make sure that they have to shore up those lanes. And they sound like they're pretty strong already. Yep. They get some lane momentum going, get the, the early ball at some point, 15, 20 minute mark. They have a save behind this Luna, who at some point gets an Aegis. Could see a fast high ground definitely on the horizon. But speaking of Arkosh, triple gauntlet Wraith King. I have not seen this yet. It's pretty interesting. Definitely ups his early base damage and tank ability. So some cool builds coming out. Do you like it though, I guess is the question because it is unusual. This is a a very poor crow here because he went and he used his salve and he's still gonna die anyways. Yeah, I couldn't even get the pull through. Just no. too much damage. Oh, monkey. Look at the, the damage that monkey is also taking from the creeps, from Sammy. He just lost, like, more than half of his hit points there. Crow coming back in, though. Might be able to punish Sammy for this move. She'll crash forward. A couple of clicks. They use the fairy fire. They'll slow Not down for a moment. That was close. Gotta go back in too. A couple clicks over onto Crow. This is a hard lane, like you said. Yeah, I mean, they have the aura up now. Disruptor can just run in, start right clicking them. It's a huge amount of burst damage from the double nukes coming out. But making this lane chaotic can also be a route in these lanes where you know you're definitely weaker. Just having a death here or there, it can actually pay off in the long run if the lane becomes just unpredictable. Uh, that's a route you can sometimes go, but <laughs> definitely a rough one. Well, that's definitely something that I think Arkosh does well, is they're usually very unpredictable and yeah, very chaotic in nature. Not always the, by their own volition, though. The most unpredictable player of all time, in my opinion, probably Eternal Envy, was a master <laughs> in making some of these side lanes just... You didn't know what was happening, and then you all lost the lane. <laughs> so sometimes that is a route to victory. Do you have a favorite Envy story where he totally surprised you? There was a period where he built a meta around going verse Darkseer with Marana with like six mangoes or something ridiculous. And his idea was you just arrow the ion shell creeps and like arrow the big creeps and you neutralize his lane presence. And I don't think it panned out very well. <laughs> I, I was about to say, I don't remember that becoming the meta. But <laughs> it did not means. become the meta. But, but how long did he did he try to make it the meta, I guess, is the question. We played it a couple times. His Marana was quite good. <laughs> he usually lost the lane terribly, but then he made some good moves and, and came back. So sometimes Dota's not always about the laning phase, right? It's about what you make with the resources you have. And mm -hmm. sometimes you can be quite far behind and still make stuff happen. That is the power of a hero like Wyvern. You're going to go there. You're going to lose the lane, but... Who cares about the lane? Nobody cares about the lane. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that's the power of Jackie Mao for a moment. That is also the power of Jackie Mao, you know? <laughs> you lose the lane, you lose the mid game, you lose the late game, you lose all your axes, but then you win. That is Dota. It's about the throne. Man, that is, that is so true. There have been many instances of just sitting there not sure how long this final series is going to last because it had Eternal Envy in it. And 
Lord knows, it could go 15 minutes or it could go, uh, you know, 90 minutes. <laughs> Depends on uh, what he felt like that day. Very true. So that is the spirit I would like to see Arkosh channel. Which is funny, though, because the other team is named Wildcard, and I would say that Eternal Envy also fits that team name quite nicely. But we need some chaos. Give us some chaos. Give us something really crazy that they're not going to expect. Mm, courier snipe. He got the helm on the courier before it gets the pale horse. Oof. That is a lot of gold going to be missing for a while. Meanwhile, the Lama has his own. So he has the helm and double gauntlet. Pale horse has no helm, but triple gauntlet. Five gauntlets in the lane. <laughs> Looks like they're trying to get aggressive. <laughs> oh my gosh. Skeletons do a lot of damage at this point. Huge ink swell too. Yeah, but the Vailama taking some clicks here. He's tanky. He needs more damage. Oh, the ink swell though. Slowing down the boys, the lads, the skelly men. Gonna chase after Divai Lama. Not quite enough damage, but Pilhor, he's diving hard for this. Monkey looks like he is gonna fall in the bottom area. Divai Lama hiding in the tree line. Pilhor, oh no! That's a little embarrassing. Yeah, I mean, they got a really good trade out of the skeleton usage, but pushing the advantage just a little too much. Maybe if you had that helm. Little things add up, right? They really do. But for taking Oracle, he's having a better game this game than he did last one. That's for sure. As you say that, you just cursed him. We'll go for the Sonic Wave. Did though. I though? Oh, no, you did. Never mind. Who's Are cursing you sure who? <laughs> Are you sure you shouldn't be named Forsaken Oracle? You saw that coming. He almost wishes support didn't TP into uh, sharing the XP if he got any, but blinking forward, too. No, he wants Ask pretty badly here. It's bottling up. Is that another scream? Does connect. So, uh, Ask. He got him, I think. Yeah, I think he's dead. Just wait patiently. Wait for that oh, sweet no. release of death to come. Low-level dagger. But got a little damage on the tower with the catapult and a nice turnout with that sonic wave. So he's definitely doing better this game than the Pugna game. Oh, yes. It's so that was a very low bar. <laughs> he got slaughtered. The, the bar was very low after that. But no, it is nice to see that uh, Forsaken Oracle having a little bit better of a time in the mid lane this time around. Sammy getting clicked away by Crow. Should be able to get the kill, but Crow most likely going to fall here. They have the vision and they have the damage. This is where Wyvern can... Ooh, pale Horse. The aggression. Oh, there it is. Last hit coming out from Alex. I mean, this lane's just... This is the power of Snapfire. You get the cookie on, you get the minus armor, double hero, right clicks. Takes down these... Uh, takes down these carry heroes pretty fast. It's about positioning too. It does have some very nice uh, ways to get the hop on with the cookie scatter blast and also just the fact that they change a little shredder, right? To remove armor just makes it so value. Yep, Raid King, he's not even gonna go back that lane. He's done with it. Doesn't wanna face the dual threat, so he's just going bottom. He has a couple skeleton charges, so he'll try and just push the tower. Mm, the hunt's on for Eves. Don't have any way to quite get their hands on Eves though, so. Teleport out. This is probably this is probably a decent move. I don't think he can really go back top. He could go to his own jungle and just jungle through with the skellies, but I actually really like when people use this Wraith King to take the early towers. I think it's where the hero excels and it's where he can provide a value that you don't get from a lot of other carry heroes. Because there's not a lot of other carries that make these early moves as efficiently or as quickly. And you don't want to just sit here and hit this tower forever as a carry either, right? There's like some Terror Blade with meta or some early Juggernaut rotations, but I think Wraith King, more people should actually make these early moves with the Skeletons if they're in a position to do it. So, I like this move. It's interesting too, the fact that, you know, you're saying they should make these, these moves by choice, but I would almost argue that Pale Horse kind of was forced into this area, right? Yeah, this isn't the exact way you ideally want to do it, you know, <laughs> off of death, but it's a good way to salvage his game to a d degree instead of just going back in a situation that doesn't bode well for him. That's true. Insanity is the repeated actions over and over expecting a different result. Or working with slacks, you know. That's actually very fair. That's probably a more apt definition. <laughs> Crow creeping around a little bit in his jungle does see that it is fully infiltrated here by several heroes on the side of Wildcard. Monkey trying his best to keep pushing out the wave. But the ons Onslaught is on here in the middle lane. Crow, still waiting patiently. They see Sammy. They could swell an invis in. They're sentry, they though. They could, but uh, they're not going to not gonna fall for that right now. Uh, this map, set map setup 
can be pretty good for Arkosh. Uh, they're going to make a smoke play here, but Wraith King's really happy with this map setup because he's just going to farm everything regardless of what ends up happening in his mid engagement. Mm -hmm. Second Oracle jumping forward here over onto Esk. Does have that ink spell, Sammy. Trying to just walk away. Gets the glimpse off over onto Forsaken Oracle. Gremlo just gonna throw off a couple of hits here with Esk. And that's just like that as ever. Pale Horse does make his own rotation here as well. So they're starting to move as a, a four core unit here. Of course, Crow up in the top lane, trying to just keep pushing them off of this tower, trying to keep it alive a little bit longer. D is this the way that they should be playing this right now, though? For the side of Arakosh? I feel like Wraith King should just farm out bottom. Um, and not be too over eager to join these fights unless they're really going to commit for these towers. And I think this mid tower is just, it's too hard to commit for this early, so you didn't get a lot of value out of that skeleton usage. Um, and th that's your best comeback mechanic, right? It's, it's best farming mechanism. It's the way he's going to accelerate in this game and overcome potentially some Mask of Madness Luna farming ancient stacks that they are just not in a position to contest. So I think they have to be careful with how they distribute the farm in this game and the engagements that they take. They also kind of need these uh, support ults, right? right? Pangle's not doing much without his role. Grim really wants his ult in terms of... I mean, there's nothing direct to combo with it, but even just more levels on this hero, getting more points in any of your nukes, getting level 3 in phantoms and brace is a huge deal for this hero. Sometimes that's just worth more than your ult itself, so... I think it's okay sometimes to try and hit your timings and not force something that isn't really to your benefit. But Forsaken Oracle does want to get a lot of value out of these quap ults, so the more they can play with that on off CD, the better. Dream Coil gets dropped by Esk, and they'll fall for the Snapfire Cookies. There's just nothing that Oracle can do. Gramlo just going to try to teleport out. They have the cookie. It's just a little bit too late. Yeah, it's a very nice kill. I mean, this is a very just nice two-hero combination that's easy, low CD, right? It reminds me of uh, the Singapore Major where people were playing a lot of Puck Phoenix. Similar idea. Puck's a great hero at locking people down for an extended period of time because you get the huge duration coil into the silence follow-up. You just need some damage on top. Monkey forced to use the Winter's Curse to buy a bit more time against Eves. And Crow is just hightailing it out. The rest of the team, though, joining up in the mid lane. We do have some ultimates online. Now we've got the Rolling Thunder, we've got the Soul Bind, so they could create some chaos. Rolling Thunder by Crow going forward. They found themselves a Snapfire. Gremlo trying to get the position. Sonic Wave will connect. They'll take down Alex. Crow still rolling forward, hoping to get his hands over onto Sammy. Gets the Swashbuckle up, but there is Eves nearby. And they're going to be able to just burst down Crow. And again, here comes Bill Horse. Right at the tail end here. It There's feels a like a glimpse, they're... though. Is he going to oh, go for no it? No one got glimpse. <laughs> it would have been sick. It would have been sick for sure. I think Sammy may be just a little bit too scared. He's sitting a bit too low. But it feels like this time around, they're playing the way that you wanted to see them playing game number one, the way that Arkosh was just running at people. This time around, you want to see Pale Horse farming, uh, much like Eves is doing here. But they're all just clumped together a lot this time and all moving as, as four and then one more coming in a little bit too late. Yeah, it's, it's a bit too much clumping. Their heroes are not that great at engaging aggressively at this point in the game. I mean, who's jumping this Puck or Legion and disabling them for the rest of their heroes to gap close? It's not that easy. The fights they want to take are almost reactionary. They, they want Wildcard to push into them. Like something here, if this Pango doesn't die here and they're hitting this tower, now you can maybe smoke in from the side with your Wyvern, ult one or two heroes, roll in with a Swell. That's the type of engagement you want to take, but... When you're just getting run at and you're getting glimpsed back, it's going to end bad for you. Is indeed. That was some dual damage placed over onto the Legion Commander. And uh, they lose a tower over in the mid lane. Arkosh just struggling today to find their footing. But Wildcard looking real tidy. They're making some really nice moves. They've got some nice drafts. And they're making it happen. Yeah. The yeah, Divide Llama really has not had to leave this side of the map at all. No, he's just farming it up. It's like the dream, right? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, he already has Arm with Blink 13 minutes in. He can't ask for a much better start. Now he just, just wants to run around and duel anybody you find, basically. As long as there's not an embrace behind him. He's almost going to solo kill some of these cores uh, with this huge timing he has. So he's a massive threat on the map right now. 
Now, when you're a massive set like this, is this a situation where you do just continue farming, or do you want to be making these plays and moving around and making the space for Luna? No, he definitely wants to get aggressive. He wants to get to the enemy side of the map, be threatening the Quap, threaten the Pango, the Grim support duo, be looking with his supports to set stuff up, because he's the best setup for a Static Storm follow-up, a Snapfire's follow-up. Like, any Blink duel is almost good, because they'll, I mean, oh, or you static just Static Storm, storm two. over on two, and they'll get a duel to boot. So there's no reason that they need to be afraid of the Wyvern. Grab low die, Sammy throwing out that XD. The roll coming through, the follow-up though. Dubai Lava he just gets burst down. The Sonic Wave and Crow getting the final hit. Just poking gently here, putting some more damage over onto this Wraith King. Sammy got to run away from him. Oh, a good cookie hop coming out from Alex. Can they finish off for second Oracle? No, they can't. S cannot do that much other than pop that reincarnation. See that tiny little piggy trying to run away. Another nice silence will prevent them from throwing out any more stuns, getting the jumps. A nice square there. The finish off. Oh, God, Crow. Just becomes roadkill. As now the glimpse comes back in the rest of the team. A wild card. They're here. And they're going to give a murder. Oh, and they're not even done yet. They still see Forsaken Oracle. S cookie hop forward. Oh, they don't manage to. Oh, they still manage to get the final hit off. Thanks to that blade here. They get the soul by and Gremlo all alone. He is going to die very, very well. They wait for the duel. Oh, my word. Monkey, though, a nice Winter's Curse will be able to get a kill on us. Their greed for the duel damage makes them pay the price, giving Wyvern enough time to come in and get the return kill. But that fight lasted so long, Luna had time to run across the entire map and get there to finish off this Wraith King kill. So she's. Super happy about that because it basically cost her nothing to come in and get that big kill. Oh god, Crow just walking right into Zavai Lama. I bet he's wishing that he had that duel up again because this would be some easy damage. But he'll settle for he's just a kill. Who needs duel when you just fight him anyway? That is a very, very uh, aggressive way to look at that. I like it. Go back in. Wyvern silence. A lot of damage from that... Uh, Duel's coming up, shredder. though. I know, they're waiting their time. They're like, oh, how nice. I mean, Forsaken Oracle's here. They could go for that. I mean, they're still going to find Monkey. Looks like, yeah, Divai Llama waiting patiently. Oh, they want the dual damage off of Oracle. Do they have it? Look at the, oh my god. Yes, they do. Some more dual damage for Divai Llamas. They're chasing after Monkey. Monkey trying to fly away, but it's hard to fly away from this Wyvern, as in the top lane. <laughs> Kremlo just trying to run. Doesn't want to be anywhere near Esk. And already that ink spell's gone. They'll drag him right back in again. Couple more clicks coming out here. Is it going to be Sammy or is it going to be Esk? It's going to be Esk. Who gets the kill? These are the games where Disrupt are super fun to play. <laughs> when your team stomps the first 10 minutes, you're super far ahead. You can just run at anything. Your cores are way stronger than the enemy cores, so they can just run them down. That's where Glimpse really shines this spell. When you're behind on this hero, it feels really bad. Because you have two spells that are positioning based that don't really help you hold the line. Uh, I mean, Glimpse is almost an anti-behind spell, right? Right. So, in games like this, this hero just looks amazing. Oh god, there's another duel. Alright, Zed Monkey. More duel damage for Divai Lama. They got the soul bind off, but there's no one there to be hooked up against. So, Divai Lama making his way back over. They can't quite get their hands on Esk. And they jump forward again over onto Crow. He's gonna have to swashbuckle away. Pale Horse turning back in. The teleports are coming out, but they have a Oh, Metallia looks like that. Forward over onto Pale Horse. Get the kill onto Crow. Snapfire kisses. Getting rained down. That Hellfire. Forsaken Oracle. He wanted this kill. He is going to get it onto Vi Lama, But he is going to get Glimpse right back into that static storm. A little bit more silence. A little bit more damage. Alex is on a killing spree. And he's just hitting creeps. What a life. Yeah, he doesn't even need to show up to these fights. His Legion is just 1v5ing at this point. Already up to 70 dual damage in oh 17 God. minutes. What do you think the final tally is going to be for this Legion? I mean, it depends how early the GG gets called, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing stopping him. That is indeed. Ask again, finding the opening, puts down the Dream Coil, the Waning Rift, the clicks, everything, and that's a double kill now for Eves. This Luna getting away with murder. Glimpse back again. They're not going to do anything else about it. They're just going to tell Crow, hey, hang out. Ask, though. Deciding, oh, hey, there's a pango here. Eves will get that kill on top of that. It's almost like Crow was resigned to his fate, but then they didn't want to kill him. He's just standing there. Are you guys going to kill me? You don't want to kill me? Please, God, kill me. Yeah, kill you know me what? out of this game. 
Oh, maybe they're just show trying to show some mercy, but yeah, this game's already pretty out of control. Early blink on Wraith King. Maybe they can try and snowball some kills off it. Oh, look at Sammy. So that's a start, but look at Divine Lava. He's coming back in. He's looking for the opening. He's looking for Gramlo. Doesn't have the rest of his team very close by, though. The jump forward, Ray Fire Blast, the cookie down into the low ground. Nice save by Alex. Scatter Blast will slow down Pale Horse just a bit. S popping back on in, though. See the buyback now coming out from Sammy. They want to be a part of this. That is the reincarnation. Eve's just running on over, looking for the opening. They'll find a pickoff on the back lines. That's Vi Lama getting yet another dual victory. As S, they threw out the silence, they threw out the soul bind, but it just doesn't seem to be doing much other than slowing them down just a tiny bit. They want Gremlo. Look at this S following up, giving off the clicks. Wayne and Griff, they get a courier on top of that. There's no awards available for Arkosh. And there's no more Gremlo. Forsaken Oracle sitting very low. Look at Esk. He's always in the right place, right time. Waning Rift clicks down the Queen of Pain. Somebody stop these guys. They're on fire. Yeah, is our, these guys have families or, you know? <laughs> oh. Very Look aggressive. At the giggles. Classic NA Dota Flame. You're already winning. You know the game's over. Why not just flame your enemy anyway? When do they start walking down mid and breaking their items? Mm, it's probably, you know, one or two more series in this season. Okay, all right. You gotta right. warm up to that. You gotta build up to it. You can't just, can't throw that down in the first two series, you know. That's true. You gotta save something. Oh, the glimpse back. That's always very embarrassing. That's also one of the best feelings, I feel like, as a disruptor player. Besides, you know, getting the, the big static storm. But you see that one guy teleporting in, send him right back to where he came. Yeah, that's not a great feeling. I've lost many team fights because of that. <laughs> oh boy, there it is, the Legion just cutting away over on the Wyvern. There's no team fight spell available for the side of Arkosh here when that happens. Eves is just teleporting out. He's like, all right, you guys got this. There's farm to be had. I'm going to just keep padding the stats. And uh, Nobody's fighting this Legion. <laughs> One way to uh, get around Embrace Dealing with your duel is to just duel the wyvern every time too, right? It's that easy. Look at this. Just waits patiently. He has the shard. And they have no way to save him. <laughs> he looks very happy over here. Yeah, at this point, you just need to go together. <laughs> <'Cause otherwise laughs> That's what they've been doing. You're just, you're just feeding dual damage. Go together. Don't show wyvern. Try and bait a duel on somebody that's not you. And then turn around with an embrace. That's your best bet, but... Game's looking grim. 30 to 9 at 21 minutes, 15k net worth lead. Yeah, this is rough. Arkosh, though, they did smoke up. Seeing, oh, right into S. So the silence immediately getting placed over to Grab Love. Do you have the Rolling Thunder? They are in position. Static Storm will hold down the. Uh, the Wraith King, but Gremlo will fall almost immediately. Sammy was in the position. Oh, now he's going to be able to get protected just a little bit more thanks to that Legion. Divai chasing down. They get that Dream Coil, and they'll get the Snapdrag right back into a duel. That's a Dead Forsaken Oracle. As the rest of Arakash, they are just crawling away, but S also sitting a little bit low. Nice dodge. Divai Lava just cleaning up everyone here. We'll be able to go trigger the reincarnation over onto the Wraith King. The Crow will find the opening. They'll finally kill on Hest. But Pale Horse, he's not looking too healthy. Ooh, the bad. The bad gets dropped. And Crow. All right, Crow will survive. They get some redemption. Puck died. They can take that with oh, them at least. But OK. Eves was just allowed to hit buildings during that entire time. No, it's an easy when the entire enemy team's dead. <laughs> yes, it is. Look at this. Waiting patiently. But then, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> he knows his role. He knows his job. Happy to do it. The life of a support, you know? The life of a content creator, right? That's true, yes. He's just there to provide the reactions for Grumlo. That and dual damage. <laughs> it's been a lot of it this game. Vilama's very happy. 130. Silver Edge on Luna. Yeah, she... Uh, pretty nice. She's pretty fat. Yeah, she can buy anything. Not a traditional choice on the hero, but when you're this far ahead, why not? Maybe that's what they need, though. Maybe they need to lull them into... Oh, never mind. Just Divine Lava gets himself a little bit more. Dual damage, 160. 
And uh, I was going to say, maybe that's how they they win this, right? They, they get a little too wacky, but uh, no, this is still looking very, very difficult. Gremlo just gets chased down. <laughs> There's a healing salve just dropped on the ground. I mean, he's trying to offer please, the, God. the peace offering. You have to pause the game when you do that. You have to pause and say, please, beg for your life. Ah, Sammy Boy with the item kill. Ah, yes, I there see we've we degenerated go. the full NA. Prime and Lower tier Dota. now. It's a very dead forsaken Oracle, and they are leashed up. But look, they're just hitting the buildings. Like, all right, that's cool. On the back lines, Crow. Oh, he's stuck. Ooh, my goodness. Oh no, indeed. The Lamals, the duels, everything is just. Go in the way of wild card here. Oh, are they going to start fountain camping? Are they going to do it? Eves just wants to finish the game, though. Look at the building damage on Eves. At 24 minutes, when, could anybody have seen that? Could Forsaken Oracle have seen that? I mean, he just wants out of this game, you know? I almost feel like wild card is, is mad and uh, <laughs> Arkosh is just <laughs> chilling. The, the tables have been turned to some degree. Just the Yule Scepter dropped on the ground. <laughs> I mean, you got to get all the classes.